we have some exciting Apple news and iPhone 15 leaks. In fact, I have seven stories which I think you're all really going to love. Number one, we have the very first updates on the iPhone 15's camera sensor. This is coming from Nikkei, who claimed that the iPhone 15 models, more likely the Pro models, will feature Sony's state-of-the-art sensor. And this new sensor is said to double the saturation signal level in each pixel. What this means is that the sensor will be able to capture more light and also expose the subject much better. The example that it gave was a subject standing in front of a very strong backlight. Normally the subject would appear almost entirely black, but with this new sensor, uh, that would not be the case. So essentially, what this all means is that the HDR processing will be much better on the iPhone 15 Pros. As you all probably know, with the iPhone 14s, we didn't really get any improvements in terms of the HDR processing. In fact, Apple is still using Smart HDR 4 uh, compared to all the previous years when they updated the HDR processing every single year. And in all honesty, I wasn't really expecting to see a new main sensor with the iPhone 15s. And that's because the iPhone 14 Pro was such a massive upgrade. And the best news here is that the regular iPhone 15s could actually get the same sensor as we got with the iPhone 14 Pros. And that would be a massive upgrade. Now, if you take a look at what Apple did in the past, every new iPhone model, non-Pro model, had the same camera module from the Pro models of the previous generation. Okay, the second piece of news is regarding that titanium frame. You've all seen the rumor that with the iPhone 15 Ultra, Apple will be using a titanium frame instead of a stainless steel frame that we have now. This was reported by Shrimp Apple Pro in the past, and we've also had those patents from Apple on uh, different ways to just make titanium uh, better when it comes to fingerprints. And now we have some fresh new details on the titanium frame, also coming from Shrimp Apple Pro, who shared this image that was posted on Weibo originally, uh, showing a titanium texture from allegedly the iPhone 15 Ultra. And uh, yes, it does indeed look like sandpaper. It looks very rough, uh, unlike the Apple Watch Ultra's titanium, which is actually very smooth. And this is kind of like uh, the OnePlus sandstone finish. But do keep in mind that this is a very zoomed in shot, so it won't actually be as rough when you use it. So that's some great news. You have more grip, you have less fingerprints, uh, and you also have a lighter phone that still feels and looks premium. So I'm really excited for that titanium frame myself. The third story is that we now have some fresh new iPhone 15 frame renders. So in the last video, I was talking about the iPhone 15 getting a redesign. Essentially, both Mark Gurman and Trim Bubble Pro said that uh, we will see a redesign with the iPhone 15s something that could look like the iPhone 5C's design or uh, the 2021 MacBook Pro's design. Essentially, a frame that is flat but then curves around the back. Now, unfortunately, we didn't really have a concept for that. We're currently very busy working on the holiday video content as myself and my entire team will be away for a few weeks and we just didn't have the time to make our own concept on this. But we do actually have a great concept from John Wan uh, which shows a beautiful pack. It kind of reminds me of the iPod Touch pack or the new M2 MacBook Airs design. It looks great. Super thin, super premium. I think this is the best render with this new design yet. And the thing is, the design will now be unified with the MacBooks. MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro, and the iPhone will have this design. So it would just be the iPads that would need to update their design as well in order for the entire lineup to match. I think that the only main difference between the actual <laughs> iPhone 15 and this concept uh, would be that we would still have glass on the back for wireless charging support instead of a full metal back. Although Apple could use a very clever trick like Google did with the Pixel 5, where the body was still aluminum, but it did have wireless charging, and that's because it had this uh, cutout where the wireless charging coil was, and then everything was covered by an extra layer. So they could essentially have metal all around and then just a circular glass uh, for that uh, wireless charging coil cutout, and then finishing that to make it match uh, the metal back. So that is doable, a bit difficult to do, but it is still doable. So I'm really curious to see what Apple does here. More on the iPhone 15 leaks right after this. This video is sponsored by NordVPN, our go-to VPN for keeping our devices secure and safe. One of our favorite parts of NordVPN is the built-in ad blocker, which intercepts frustrating ads that you see all over the web. This makes a huge difference as it cleans up web pages, enabling for a much cleaner experience. On top of this, it blocks all tracking cookies, allowing you to browse the internet without leaving a trail, and keeps your privacy intact. Also, it blocks malicious websites so that you can dodge any malware looking to harm your device. Go to nordvpn.com slash ZOTVPN or use the link below for an exclusive discount with four extra months for free. Plus, a 30-day money-back guarantee means that you can try Nord 
without any risks. And now, back to the video. The fourth story is that we now have some updates on those solid state buttons. So Minchiko reported back in October that the iPhone 15 Ultra, and maybe the Pro Models 2, will drop the physical volume and the power button in favor of haptic buttons. So essentially two extra haptic motors in that case for a total of three. And we haven't really had any rumors on that until now. So now Apple supplier Cirrus Logic hinted at haptic buttons in the iPhone 15 Pro. So essentially they were hinting at one of their main customers, keep in mind that Apple is their biggest, requiring extra haptic motors in the second half of next year, likely referring to the iPhone 15s. Barclays analysts Blaine Curtis and Tom O'Malley uh, also said that Cirrus Logic was most likely referring to the haptic buttons inside the iPhone 15 Pros here. Now, I gotta say, I'm not really a fan of removing the physical buttons, although um, the haptic home button did actually work really well on the iPhone and it was also more reliable after the 7. And same goes for the trackpad on the MacBooks. Those were both better than before. I guess the biggest advantage of Apple doing this is that we will have probably the best haptics in any phone, especially if Apple utilizes the haptics even more uh, in software. And number five, Apple has now launched the self-repair program for the iPhone and the Mac in Europe and the UK. So this is pretty cool actually. You have to go to a specific website, which is not an Apple website. So it's selfservicerepair.com and it doesn't even look like an Apple website, but it is an Apple website. And you can order parts or manuals for the iPhones and the Macs. Unfortunately, you don't really get a lot of models to choose from. Uh, on the Mac side, you only get the Apple Silicon Macs and you don't actually have the empty MacBook Air yet. But let's say if you select the iPhone 13 Pro as manual, you get detailed instructions on how to replace the screen, the battery, basically everything. And you can even loan tools, massive ones actually, that help you complete those repair tasks. But honestly, in most cases, I do think that it would be easier and possibly even cheaper to simply take those devices to the Apple Store yourselves and get those fixed there. Just because Apple's components are still not the cheapest and requiring those massive tools is just a very big inconvenience. Although in some cases, such as the MacBook repairs and the iPhone battery replacement, you might actually find it more useful to just read the manual and do it yourselves as those are a bit easier tasks than something like replacing the iPhone screen. Now, if you don't want to repair your old iPhone and you're looking for an affordable upgrade, I would honestly suggest looking at refurbished models from the year prior. You can actually tap on the screen uh, to access the YouTube shoppable cards to see some good prices on the iPhone 13, for example, which are still some great choices. Okay, now we have some quick Apple news, starting off with the Apple Mixed Reality headset, where I have some software and some hardware updates for you. So in terms of the software, Mark Gurman said that Reality OS will include Mixed Reality versions of Apple's core apps, such as Messages, FaceTime, Maps, which is very interesting. He also said that it will focus on gaming, media consumption, and communication with Memojis and SharePlay to play a major role in the experience. So I'm assuming that Memojis would simply be used in conjunction with face tracking, just like on the MetaQuest Pro. But then when it comes to SharePlay, this is a bit of an odd one. Like what would you actually share? Maybe your first person view. I cannot actually think of anything better, <laughs> but let me know in the comments if you have any ideas. But interesting enough, in his latest report, Mark Gurman actually said that Reality OS won't actually be called Reality OS, but XR OS. So they've just renamed it into XROS, which comes from Extended Reality OS, so essentially Augmented Reality plus Virtual Reality. In fact, a shell company said to belong to Apple called Deep Dive LLC has already registered the XROS trademark in a number of countries. And at number seven, we have a new US TSMC plant, which is actually some very big news. Essentially, TSMC is said to be opening a new plant in the US, in Arizona, in 2024 and focus on a four nanometer manufacturing process. The main reason for this being a potential conflict between China and Taiwan. Um, and because of that, Apple just doesn't want to lose all of its, you know, chip manufacturing capability, which at the moment is just TSMC Taiwan. So that's why they're doing this. Just in case something happens with Taiwan, uh, they just want to have the option to manufacture their chips in the US as well. The only issue is that this facility will only be able to manufacture up to four nanometer chips and that's in 2024. TSMC Taiwan will be manufacturing three nanometer chips for Apple in 2023. So I'm guessing that this facility would simply just manufacture legacy chips like the M2, which is based on a five nanometer process, but the M2 might not even exist in 2024. So it's just very weird. I guess it's simply a precaution in case something bad happens, then they could still manufacture these chips in limited quantities in the US. Uh, on a larger manufacturing process. But we do actually have a fresh update on this. Tim Cook and President Biden came to Arizona recently 
and they both announced plans to start manufacturing American-made chips. Tim Cook even confirmed that he will be building chips for future iPhones and MacBooks here, with actual plans for even a 3 nanometer manufacturing process after all. Although, uh, this would only be from 2026 onwards. But what do you guys think of all of these updates? I'm Daniel, this has been Zenoftech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenoftech, signing out. Cheers.